Let's take a look at identifying and factoring perfect square trinomials. First of all, we need to know what exactly is a perfect square trinomial. Well, a perfect square trinomial is something that looks like this, where we have a squared <coughs> plus 2ab plus b squared, or we could have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Notice that what we have here is the first term is a perfect square, the last term is a perfect square, and the middle term of the trinomial is made up of multiplying a times b times 2. And that comes from what happens when we FOIL uh, uh, binomials that uh, give us these. And we'll take a look at that a little bit more as we make our way through. So the first thing that we need to do is identify and know if it is a perfect square trinomial. So we look at the first term. Is it a perfect square? Well, yes. What's multiplied by itself gets us x squared. Well, that would be x. So x times x gets us x squared. So that's definitely a perfect square. Then I look at the last term. Is that a perfect square? Well, is there something that we can multiply by itself to get 81? Yes, there is. 9. So then we need to check and see if that middle term is this times this times 2. Well, let's see. x times 9 would be 9x times 2 would be 18x. And as in this case, it's a minus. So we do have a perfect square trinomial. So here's how it's going to break down. It's going to be x minus 9 squared. So let's take a look at... Um, another one here and see what's going on and then we're gonna go back and maybe foil one of these out just to see where that two stuff comes from in the middle so this one here if we look at it the first term is that a perfect square yes that would be X the last term is that a perfect square hmm no it's not there's no number that we can multiply by itself to get six it's not a perfect square so what that means is that we can't factor this as a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so let's take a look at this next one. Again, doing the check to see if it's a perfect square trinomial. Is this a perfect square? Well, yes. 2x times 2x would get us 4x squared. Then 36, well, let's see. 6 times 6 gets us 36. So we have 2x and 6. Then remember, we have to check the middle term. So here we have 2x times 6, which would be 12x, times 2 would be 24x. Uh-oh, that's not what we have here for our middle term. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. And finally, let's check this last one. 9x squared, is that a perfect square? Well, we can look at the, the number here and then look at the variable part. So 9, yep, that's a perfect square. That would be 3 times 3 x squared is x times x, so 3x would be squared to get us this. Then 4, is that a perfect square? Yes. Then we look at the middle term. So 3x times 2 is 6x. Multiply that by 2 would be 12x. And in this case, we have a minus, so it's going to be 3x minus 2 squared. Now, remember, if we were to FOIL this out, let's take a look, go back to this one and take a look at what's going on in the middle there. If we'd FOIL that, I'm going to switch colors here just so we can kind of keep this separate a little. I would have, remember that squared means x times x minus 9 times x minus 9. So we have that. Then if I FOIL this, it would be x times x, so x squared. Then it would be x times negative 9, which is negative 9x. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x. And then negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81. So notice what happened here. We've got those, the first and, and last terms. But in the middle, notice how we have the same term that's repeated. That's where we end up with this times 2 times AB piece right there. So if we were to combine those two, we would end up right back up there to that negative 18x. Another thing to look for when you're looking for perfect square trinomials is make sure this second sign is a positive. And that's simply because 
the only way we can get uh, oh, the only thing that we're going to get when we square something is a positive. There's no way to get a negative by squaring something. Because if we multiplied a negative times a negative, that would be something squared. That's a positive. And a positive times a positive is positive. There's no way to square something and get a negative. So if this sign right here is minus, it's not a perfect square trinomial. Also, we can always just factor these the good old fashioned way, like you factor other trinomials. But this is really a shortcut that helps us, especially if we have something like this. To factor this would take, you could either factor by grouping, use a ABC bottoms up method. But it's not as easy as just looking at it, finding that it's a perfect square trinomial, and boom, there it is versus some of the other things. So remember you can fall back on that if you forget the how the perfect square trinomials look but if you remember it can help you make your way through a little bit more quickly. Um, hopefully this was helpful in terms of uh, finding those perfect square trinomials. Make sure you're working hard on your math and I know you'll do fantastic.